Hey everyone, it's your girl Courtney here, owner of Courtney Shavante Limited Liability Company, where lavish and edge meet. Well, underneath my brand, one of my businesses is Bougie Hippie. Bougie Hippie is a femme apothecary dedicated to feminine wellness and self-care. So I'm all about making sure that we create a vibe and making sure that it's really feminine. So one of the items that we have available on Bougie Hippie are rolling trays. So today I'm going to be teaching you step by step, even down to the products that I use, how to create this rolling tray. So if resin art is something that you are interested in, or maybe you just want to whip up your own rolling tray, this is definitely the tutorial for you, especially if you love luxury items. All right, here we go. Okay, so I always like to make sure that I do start with a setup workspace. Uh, once you pour the resin, you only have so much time before it starts to cure on you. So I like to make sure I have all my products out. I like to make sure that I do start off with a clean mold. So you see me wiping this off with an alcohol pad, making sure there's no residue from previous pours, which there typically isn't. All right, so what you see me doing now is you see me pulling the plastic film off of each butterfly. Um, I like to kind of use some tweezers and start off at a cor corner and start kind of pulling at it. And then from there, you can usually get a little edge to pull off. And then from there, you're able to kind of grab it and you can, you know, just pull the film right on off. It'll expose that nice shiny side for you. And that's what we want right there. Now I'm going to take our baby butterfly here. I'm going to do the exact same thing that you just see me do with the larger butterfly. I'm trying to do a little bit more up close for you so that way you can kind of catch and see what I was talking about earlier. Now that I've got my butterflies prepped, I want to go ahead and put my gloves on. It helps protect my nails, also protects my skin, so that way they don't get messed up. I just don't like pulling the film off the butterflies with my gloves on because it makes it really difficult. Part of my prepping process is also making sure that I have my design laid out previously. Sometimes it takes me forever to figure out what I want to do with it. So I like to go ahead and make sure that it's put out. Now the resin that I use, I like to use Dr. Crafty Resin. I have had absolutely no issues with this. It gives me a lot of time to work with, but also cures pretty quickly as well. So that way I don't always have to wait a full 24 hours before I pull anything out the mold. And I can always let it cure on its old. I'm sorry, on its own. And I also like to make sure that I pour, pour the purple one first because it's thinner. Um, that also makes it easier for me to stir later. So that just kind of helps me expedite the process. You want to make sure that you put even amounts of each. If not, your resin may come out icky later. Make sure you stir really, really well. You want to try to do a smooth stir to minimize the amount of bubbles that you'll see as well. So stirring, stirring, stirring. You also see me pull out a heat gun as well. I use the heat gun to help make it easier to stir and also helps pop a lot of the bubbles. Um, I prefer to use the heat gun mostly outside of the molds because the molds can get messed up if you um, use too much direct heat on it and you don't want that to happen because you know that's one of your investments. Here you see me prepping the gold foil for the rim. So I use these cute little cups that I get from the Dollar Tree. Um, I get about 45 of them for a dollar. Um, it's really great for smaller amounts. This is the gold foil I'm using. I just go ahead and put that in there. I like to get it chopped up real finely as much as I can before actually pouring the resin in um, because it helps minimize the bubbles and you don't want like the really big chunks of gold foil, at least on this project because that's not the look I was going for. So I'll go ahead and add in a little bit of our resin. I'll go ahead and get that stirred up. You see me pull the heat gun out again so that way I can go ahead and remove some of those bubbles. Now from there, we're just going to go ahead and take our foil and pour it around the edges to create that nice, beautiful rim. Now 
Now you see me pouring some clear resin down. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm creating a nice little base so that way I can go ahead and start pressing my flowers into it. So what you do is you're going to put the flowers down um, in order of what you want to see first. So since I want the vine and everything to be behind the flower, I make sure I put the flower down first and then the vine. I also didn't want the big butterfly to be the center focal point, so I made sure to put that down last. Um, this tool that you see me using, um, I know a lot of different nail techs use this for nail dotting and stuff like that. I personally use it for for this and it works great it helps me be able to press down the tiny little stems and everything make sure I push it down forward as much as I can because that's what you want to create the least amount of sliding over time because as you can see as you see me pushing stuff around and everything some of these parts do move and you want to try to avoid that as much as possible We're just going to keep, you know, making sure that we press these down. We want to try to get the resin to cover the backs of it as well because that also help make it heavier and help make it stick down in place where you want it. Um, from there, you're just going to see me, you know, just kind of get everything together exactly how I want it. I want it placed perfectly. And then I'm just going to push it off to the side and move it out the way where nothing can land on it so that way I can make sure it stays protected while this first layer cures for me. Here I'm taking the cup of our main color, uh, which is going to be a pink. I'll link that below. I also use a little bit of glitter in here too. I like to start off with a little bit of resin to go ahead and get that mixed up. And then from there, once I get that mixed up really well, I'll add in more resin so that way I can make sure my color comes out nice and evenly. You see me scraping at the sides because I don't like to waste any at all. the other colors I'll be working with I pre-mixed them um, outside of the camera I will start with the confetti mix um, from there I just go ahead and pour that around and then I trace around it with my gold pigment color um, that's going to create that nice geode effect that um, comes out in the end so the clear confetti part is completely see-through it's kind of hard to see it on the camera and everything but You'll be able to see it up close and personal um, later on in the video. In the empty spaces, I go through with that main color that I'm using, that pink color with the glitter mix. Um, it also has some glow-in-the-dark pigment as well, so it's going to have a really cool effect even at night too. All right, now this is one of the fun parts in my personal opinion. So this is one of the blues that I mixed up and this is the purple color. What you're going to see me doing is making sure I got them nice and um, stirred up and then I use my popsicle stick and kind of go over creating little lines within the pink part and everything. Um, it's very randomized, so just go ahead and you know put it in there. We'll be you know mixing it up a bit later, so don't worry exactly about where everything falls. That's kind of the beauty of it, the fact that you know it can't be planned out completely. Thank you. 
Now I'm taking my heat gun and I'm kind of going through and mixing those up a bit. I also get that dotting tool that I was telling you about earlier. I do little circular motions across in the um in those little pink areas, those pink, blue, and purple areas, so that way I can try to mix them in a bit, which is what I was speaking about earlier. Hey everyone, so it's currently about 9 a.m. So this is set for well probably about nine hours or so so as you can see the resin will move around which is completely fine if you're going to be working with resin you need to understand that it kind of has a mind of its own it's going to do what it wants to do but this is what it's looking like right now I'm not quite sure how well you guys can see on the edge but there is a little bit of space especially more so on this side so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be mixing up another 100 milliliters of the resin and i'll just be doing a pour nice little clear even layer on top i'll make sure i go through with my heat gun as well to get all the bubbles out too this over here um, is just like a little resin hack that I have. So with all my orders, I give out free keychains. Each keychain is guaranteed to be one of a kind because it's made with the resin from other projects that I make. So I just come over here and pour the most common letters first and then I fill in the ones that, you know, um, haven't sold yet. So if you have some extra resin left over and everything like that and it's colored and all that good stuff, that's a good thing to do with it. Hey guys. All right. So where we left off last was we went ahead and we added a clear coat to the back of this. That was about 18 hours ago. So now after sitting for this long, um, I will go ahead and, you know, demold this so that way I can go ahead and see what's going on. So that is what we are going to be doing now. All right, so when I'm demolding my products, I like to make sure I'm careful because these lines due to the meniscus effect, which I'll input some information about over here-ish. Yeah, okay, so regarding the meniscus effect, it can make the arms very, I'm sorry, the edges <laughs> very, very sharp. So I like to make sure I'm very careful going across that part, but you're basically just gonna pull at the edges of your molds like this because you want to get it loose in all the places that you can this one's actually pretty simple overall to demold but not all of them really are especially the deeper that you get all right so I'm slowly pull this off Then from there, this is our finished product. So this is what we have here. I don't want to cover up my fingers. I hope you guys can see that. I'll make sure I put a clip in so that we guys can get a better look, but yes. This is actually my very first time doing this exact type of effect, but I am really, really loving it. So you guys can definitely look forward to seeing more coming from me regarding this style. Now from here, what you see me doing is you see me just kind of pulling these little edges off right here. I don't know 
if you can see that depending on kind of how it's angled maybe but we're just going to be pulling these little things off right here because it's unnecessary you know that on there all right now um, because I don't want to get too many particles on the couch that I'm sitting on right now and I also want to make sure I put my mask on for it I'm going to be sanding the edges down but I'll be putting a clip in on how I did that so that way you do so that way you guys can see kind of how that goes down and how I can take care of this sharp edge and prepare it for the website so stay tuned for that part All right, everyone, so what we're going to be doing here is we're just going to be sanding down these edges. So um, previously, I already went through and picked off all the pieces that I could with my fingers and everything after we finished the demolding. So we are going to be taking a little sanding block. This one's already been used, but I'll make sure that I do link one for you down below as well so that you can see which kind I use. I did make sure that I got the fine grit because you don't want to leave like a really scratchy surface on here since people are going to be handling this. So it's pretty self-explanatory. You just kind of take the block. I like to use this edge because it's not easier. And then you just kind of pull across each edge like so. All right, so again, thank you so much for joining me today for my very first tutorial. I can't wait to bring even more for you guys. If you guys have any questions, make sure that you do just put them in the comments for me below. I'll make sure that I do my best to get back to them for you in a timely manner because I do wanna make sure that everything's clear for you. So if there's anything that you need a little bit of clarification on, feel free to let me know. Also, go to CourtneyShivante.com so that way you can see everything that is Courtney Shivante. If you see, um, if you go to the site, you'll see that I have a newsletter that you can sign up for. In that newsletter, you'll get a greeting um, email as well that will have a special code for you so that you can get 20% off the entire Courtney Shivante website with that discount code. So make sure that you do check that out as well. I can't wait to provide more stuff like this for you guys. And also I do have more stuff available as well. So make sure you check that out on the site under our bougie hippie tab so you can see all the other different styles that I do plan on showing you guys on how I made coming up. Um, But just keep in mind that I'm only one person so I can't just you know create all this stuff by myself it does take me a little bit of time but i have no problem doing it just make sure that you let me know what it is that you'd like to see next if there's something that you prefer or certain thing that you saw on there let me know i can't wait to get it out for you so until next time thank you so much for joining me today Mwah. bye now